I'm totally gonna start doing that. I'm just every every uh video that I take. Oh, like I'm just gonna pick a book that's not even in the fucking video and make it my thumbnail. Welcome to Party of My Imagination. I'm Imagination, and you're the Imaginers. Welcome if this is your first time. My name is Jasmine and welcome back if this is your second or third or after times you've clicked on my channel. Welcome. Today, if you can't tell from the title of this video, I'm going to be doing the mid-year freak out. What's it called again? <laughs> I should probably know the name of the video that I'm about to do. But the mid-year freak out tag. That's what I'm doing. I've done this almost every year. I think I, I don't think I did it last year. Don't quote me. But I'm actually going to be using some of the questions also from Books and Lala, Kayla, if you don't know her channel, it's Books and Lala. Um, I really like how she does a spin on it, so I'm also going to be using her spin, but that's basically the tag. So the first question is, how is your reading going? If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I've kind of just been in the worst reading slump for like the last two years. It feels like two years. Um, and it all started when I moved. It started before I moved because I was stressed out about moving. So then I wasn't reading as much. So that was in like 2021. And then all of 2022 I moved and I was getting ready, used to a new job. So I was stressed even more so I wasn't reading. And this year I've picked up my reading but I'm still just not back in the wave. This month I'm feeling it. I am definitely feeling the reading and wanting to read and that's what I've been missing is the wanting to read and feeling excited to read whereas for the last couple of months I feel like I've just been reading to read because I like reading I enjoy reading I love reading and I was I don't know but yeah my reading year is going okay I had a goal for a hundred then I bumped it down to 50 so that's where we're at now but I will say I am halfway to my reading goal so that's exciting. Uh, the next question is, best book you've read so far this year? So if you can't see, these are all the books. <laughs> Not this. This is my current TBR. Um, this is the books I've read so far this year. Um, and, uh, oh, I, I guess I should say that. I've read 25 books so far this year. I'm missing two that I don't currently own. I gave one away, and one was a ARC that I got, so... I would have to say for me is Act Your Age, Eve Brown um, by Talia Hilbert. This is the third book in the Brown Sisters. Um, this is a romance, which is also a surprise that I'm saying this is probably the best book I've read this year. The re reason why I didn't pick Red Rising is because it's my favorite book. So, of course, I'm going to love Red Rising, right? Like, that's common sense. But, um, yeah, this is probably my favorite. Just because I needed a little bit of romance in my life. And it just gave me all the feels that I needed. And uh, yeah, this was a great book. The next question is the best sequel you've read this year. And I don't think I have read... Oh, I've read one sequel. And that is Bitter. So I'm going to have to go with Bitter. Um, do I think that... Oh, this is by uh, Awakey Emenzi, and this is the second book in Pet. This is actually technically a prequel, so I don't know if that counts, but I haven't read any other books that are... Oh, also, Concrete Grows. Also, the second in a... It's not technically a series, but this is a prequel to The Hate You Give, so... Um, yeah, I haven't read any in a series besides Back to Your Age. Um, so I'm going to say Bitter. Um, this is the second or prequel to Pet, if you haven't read Pet. Pet is following this young girl who lives in a world where there aren't names for sins. And sins are translated in, into what in that world is seen as monsters they're no longer monsters and there's angels that got rid of the monsters um and is following this girl who draws a pit a painting or no her mother is a painter which is who's in this book bitter um her mother bitter 
draws this painting and her daughter goes in to look at the painting and she gets a bit of blood on it and it brings the, photo, the painting to life so it brings this monster into this world and this monster is set to find out this monster is actually trying to find the real monster which again is sense it was a really great way of articulating and talking about being open to talk about sins and something happening around you that you might not understand as a child because it's it the, I believe this is a children's book or not children per se but teenagers young adult and I loved it I love the way that it translated sins into something that people can see as wrong and not just saying that's wrong you shouldn't be doing it she she wrote it in a way of hey this these are monsters and these are things that you might not see as wrong because people are saying that it's no longer happening it's not happening so you're not looking for it but it could be right there in your face i loved it um you kind of get a glimpse of the story of what happened with bitter um and this is the prequel obviously the prequel so you're getting the mom's perspective when she was younger and how this came to be okay the next book i have is favorite reread and again i'm not going to pick red rising because red rising is always going to be my fave but the only other reread i've done this year is this one which is a song of raves and ruin by roseanne a brown uh if you don't know i just met her again or i just met her for the first time she i got it signed this was definitely a f phenomenal reread for me um and i reread it again so i could read a, a psalms and oh i'm blanking on the name of it but you guys know the second book to this and i loved it if you don't know what this story is about you're following the you're following two main characters it's a dual perspective um you're following <clears throat> malik who is a i'm not gonna say peasant he's a refugee he's a refuge who is traveling with his older sister and youngest sister and he is trying to make a better they're trying to find a better way for their life they are coming from a war stricken kind of um home and they're just trying to get better and then you're following karina who is a princess um she also has a bit of tragedy she lost her father and her her older sister and it's just her and her mom and she has felt isolated from her mom um after the passing of her dad and sister so you're following these two characters and some things happen he kind of gets trapped into having to kill the princess and she gets trapped into having to kill a king so they you have what's called what is it i forgot the name of it already um oh what's it called it's like a solstice there we go um so there's a solstice that is going on it's seven days long and it's challenges for each um s not symbol but um entity so you have like the water sun earth fire entities per se um and they're all going to compete in the, in these challenges and after the challenges they will be the winner and that's the that element will be the next 50 years that represent so on and so forth so there's a bit of magic in here there's a ton of anxiety not anxiety representation for anxiety malik has um some things that he's dealing with and also so does katrina and i loved it so much um i'm blabbering on and i feel like i didn't give a good representation of what this book is about but i love this book i gave it five stars the uh, next question is drana you've been loving slash reading the most sci-fi in here i think i have three sci-fis um a ton of fantasy some contemporary not or literary fiction a bit of manga so i'm gonna have to say fantasy that's the that's my big one but i feel like that's obvious because it's been my biggest one so there's no surprise there you know all right the next question is new release you haven't read yet but want to and i'm going with the adventures of amina la all safari and this is by shannon chakaborty also if you don't know 
because I didn't know because how did I not? This is S.A. Chakaborty, the City of Brass author. City of Brass author. Um, so this is following Amina Al Safari. Should be content after a, after a storied and scandalous career as one of the Indian Ocean's most notorious pirates, she should die backstabbing rogues, vengeful merchant princes, several husbands, and one actual demon to retreat to retire peacefully with her family to a life of piety, piety, excuse me, wow, I can't, I can't read, piety, motherhood, and absolutely nothing that hints of the supernatural, but when she's tracked down by the ups, obscenely wealthy mother of a former crewman, she's offered a job no bandit could refuse, retrieve her comrade's kidnapped daughter for a kingly sum. Then the chance to have one last adventure with her crew, do right by an old friend, and win a fortune that will secure her family's future forever? It seems like such an obvious choice that it must be God's will. And there's more, but I'm not going to read into it because, yeah. Um, it's a pirate story with magic, and I'm here for it. Alright, the next question is... Most anticipated release for the second half of the year, and if you don't know anything about me, you're going to know now. And that is... Lightbringer by Pierce Brown. If you didn't know that, the, if you didn't know the answers to that question, I feel like you haven't watched enough of my videos, which is fine, but you should watch more of my videos. But yes, that is the, ooh, what is that? Fifth? Red Rising, Golden Sun, Morning Star, Iron Gold, Dark Age. Six. Why did I not know the number? I don't know. Six. It's the sixth book in the Red Rising saga now. Used to be a tri I always say trilogy because it started as a trilogy and it became a saga. And yeah, we're here. But Lightbringer, I am not going to tell you what Red Rising is about because I have talked about Red Rising through and through on my channel that you should know. And if you don't know, I am doing a reread. <laughs> okay, I said I was going to do a reread of the series, I was doing a read along on my channel. Did that happen? Do you see any of the other books on this? No. I only read one book, and that was Red Rising. But I did have it. Uh, okay, the next question is, what is my biggest disappointment this year? And I'm definitely going to have to go with Goliath. Um, okay, hear me out. It's not that this book was not good. It was just smarter than me. That's the best way I can play it. So, you guys remember Black Leopard, Red Wolf? And I read that book, and it took me months to read it, because I was like, what the f is going on in this book? That's how I felt in this book. Like, I just felt like there were so many different characters and there were just so many things going on that I couldn't art I couldn't understand what was happening. And I kind of just breezed through it just to get through it. In the 2020s, excuse me, in the 2050s, Earth has begun to empty. Those with the means and the privilege have departed the great cities of the United States for the more comfortable confines of space colonies. Those left behind salvage what they can from the collapsing infrastructure as they eke as they eke out of existence, their neighborhoods are being ca cannibalized. Brick by brick, their houses are sent to the colonies. What was once a home, now a quaint, a quaint reminder that the colonists of the world that they wrecked. Um, and it just... Did I get the backdrop of the story? Yes. But it, it was so hard to follow these characters because it would just... And maybe it wasn't good because I listened to the audiobook. But I literally started this last year and I didn't finish it until this year. And this was the second book that I finished this year. But this lighting, what is happening with this lighting? The sun is creeping and that's why I have this line on me. Because the sun is like creeping. Okay, much better. Anyways. You walk, you walking in front of the, the, oh, baby. You're walking in front of it, so you keep changing the lighting on my camera. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, we've got an angle change and a lighting change because the sun is going down. It's 7 o'clock here, so, yeah. Anyways, the next question is my biggest surprise, and that is going to be, who put this song on by Morgan Parker? Okay, it's going to hate me. Um, and yeah, this book is following basically a loose base of Morgan's life as a teenager and um, her diaries that she wrote when she was younger. 
as a teenager. I didn't know what this book was about at all. I thought it had something to do with music and it kind of does have something to do with music but not really. You're just following her life. It's starting this book out where she's saying basically it alludes to self-harm and now everyone is completely worried about her and just kind of watching her but she's also grown up in a black family so it's kind of taboo for her to have these um panic attacks um and anxiety attacks so representation representation for that and you're kind of just following the story of this like punk gothic girl who is just trying to get by and she lives in a town where she's basically the only black girl and there's probably like one other black student so we all know how that goes right and I really enjoyed this and it gave a really great message. All right, the next one is a favorite new author to me, debut or new, and I'm gonna go with Dina Chen. Um, this is Violet Made of Thorns. I believe this is adult fantasy. I enjoyed this so much. Um, I enjoyed her writing. I enjoyed the banter, her characters, um, the spicy scenes they weren't extremely spicy but they were just a little bit like fantasy spicy and I enjoyed it um and I really did enjoy this story so I feel like I would pick up anything else that she put out the next question is newest favorite character and uh if y'all can't tell I did not plan this video and I should have but I didn't I was just like I need to record and then I started recording And I'm going to go with, <laughs> y'all are going to be like, you're so typical, but I'm going to go with, what's his name? Oh, I'm uh, Alistair. Alistair Lowe from All of Us Villains, okay? You hate to love him. You got to love him. And he's the bad boy that he's not meant to be, okay? Alistair has my heart. No, seriously. <laughs> seriously oh this is also by amanda foodie and christine lynn herman this story was great it was perspective multiple perspectives um and there's characters in here that you're gonna hate you're meant to hate you love you don't love and it was everything a you kind of needed in a competition especially a competition to the death and i loved it and i need to read the second one so yeah all right, and the, and the uh, next question is a book that made you cry. And I'm going to go with Eleanor by Jason Gurley. And I talked about this book in one of my... Was it a, It wasn't a wrap-up. Was it a wrap-up? I don't remember. But this book could have been five stars for me. But like I said in that wrap-up video, it wasn't five stars. Mainly because I am a mom of twins. I am a mama twins, so this book resonated with me so well that I could not get over that. And if I wasn't a mom of twins, I probably would have given five stars. Like, oh, uh, my heart. I actually am getting teary-eyed right now talking about it because this is one of my biggest fears. Uh, no, can't do it. That that's what really got me for this. But also, what got me is like you're learning the story of the generations of Eleanor's family. Granted, you are following Eleanor's story, but there is some supernaturalness to it. Not overly, like, well, I'm not going to say it's not overly because it is, like, the other perspective is a supernatural perspective. But not in the way of, like, magic and things like that. More so, like, you're looking over on the other side or another outer world, that entity. I'm going to do a deep dive. I'm, I'm going to stop talking about it because I need to do a review of this book on my channel. But yes, this book made me cry. Alright, the next is a book that made you happy. And a book that made me happy is... I don't know. There's a ton. All of them? Not really. That's not true. I can't say that. <sighs> this book right here. Cla Assassination Classroom by uh, Yusei Matsu. Uh, this book made me happy. It's a manga. And <laughs> this is such a great, just like, funny story. And you just appreciate the story and you appreciate everything that's going on in the story. So basically you're following this alien who says that he's going to destroy the world at the end of the year unless this one specific classroom in Japan can kill him. And it's 
high schoolers, like teenagers. And basically, these teenagers are supposed to be like the dropout, not dropouts per se, but the black sheep of the school essentially. Like they're not the ones that get the best grades or, you know, they're not the richest kids or, you know, just the unliked essentially. And so they all get sent to this classroom. Like they're still a part of the high school, but the high school are basically shunning them. Like this is like a thing, like society even shuns them. Like, oh, you're in that class? Mm, no. So like they're meant to like not get good jobs and all this crazy stuff. But yeah, you're following this classroom and this teacher is basically like teaching them life, lesson, life lessons while also trying to teach them how to kill him. What? It's so great. It's wholesome. I loved it. Alright, the next one is the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received. And that is Where It Rains in Color by Denise uh, Crittenden. Crittenden? Look at the cover. Okay. I had to make sure I get this. Like, don't look at my face. Look at this book. Okay, so beautiful cover about a beautiful woman. We're here for it. Oh my god. Not me hitting my book as soon as I go to put it down and putting a dent in it. <sighs> you, you, you just can't make this shit up, you know? Alright, the next is what book what books do you need to read by the end of the year? <laughs> my entire TBR shelf. <laughs> um I don't have a specific of like the books that I want to read as far as like off the top of my head I do want to finish all of my 23 series if you don't know I will link the playlist down in the description but all the books that I said I wanted to read this year are the books that I want to read finish reading I feel like I've been doing pretty well but let's take a look let's take a look at that you know like have i actually been doing that good can name two because i just read songs of race and ruin and ferris and then i know that descendant of the crane was on there forest of souls was on there um i believe eleanor was on there red rising no was not on there and i have two books up here that are on my list actually if you didn't know, if you didn't watch my TBR video for July, every book on my July TBR are part of my 23 series. Nine. I've read nine books so far off of my list. So I feel like I'm not doing so good. <laughs> Your girl's got to pick up the pace, okay? But I should be picking up the pace come J July because I am in a very good reading headspace right now. And that's it. The last two questions I'm not going to answer because I've not been extremely active on my channel. So I can't really answer those questions. But yeah. I think that's it. I'm going to stop blabbing on because this video has also gone on for too long. So. I'm glad you guys came. Thanks for coming. But. Uh, that is all that I have for you guys today. Be sure to check out my description where you can find easy ways to contact me. As well as all the books and videos that I talked about. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if not, just imagine that you didn't come back again. Until next time, keep imagining.